So the Wanderer's Tethering, uh, recently commissioned by Boston Lyric Opera, is having its premiere during the Juneteenth weekend at Hibernian Hall. Can you take us through the story of this libretto? Sure. So the Wanderer's Tethering follows a story of a woman named Toby who's half black American and half um, Nigerian, specifically from the Igbo tribe. And it's a story of becoming, and I like how Portia, the libretto, talks about it. She mentions it as rememory being the power of the story. So she goes through these different vignettes where she is determining what's the power of her name, where does it come from, what's the power of both of her identities as a black American but also as a Nigerian specifically from the Igbo tribe and the whole story of the Igbo people. And it's for soprano, spoken word, and string quartet. So there are moments where Portia, who will be uh, delivering the spoken word, represents another version of Toby and they converse with one another and as the story progresses uh, she recollects over Dunbar Creek which is where this whole story of um, the Igbo people happened and she almost goes deeper the more that she goes deeper and deeper into this creek the more she starts to be taken over and pulled by the story of Toby and um, her whole process of seeking freedom within the Igbo tribe. So it's a really incredible story of becoming and claiming yourself, mining yourself to understand who you are and where you come from. Wow, and the libretto actually tells a true story of the 1803 uh, Igbo slave revolt that occurred in Georgia. Unfortunately, it's not known by many people. Uh, what about the story compelled you to write the music for this? Yeah, it's interesting when this piece, when I was approached for this piece, I was just coming off of a different um, collaboration with the Philadelphia Chamber Music Society, and it was just, and it was also a collaboration with the incredible Pine Forge Academy Choir and all of those amazing singers, and it was giving life to some of the runaway slave ads that were on a database called Freedom on the Move that was um, made by Cornell University. And that whole process of seeing all of these identities of people who reclaimed themselves as emancipated slaves fed into picking up this piece where it's of the same nature, but it's still a story of, of owning, your, like reclaiming yourself and owning your sense of self. Um, whether that's through the power of rememory, like Portia was saying, so figuring out how to capture that in the piece that also included synthesizing Negro spirituals and Igbo folklore music to capture that sense of rememory. So it was a really interesting journey of quilting almost, just stitching together a lot of different inspirations of both identities um, to make that story happen. And you mentioned Portia Olayuwola, who's the Boston Poet Laureate. Can you talk about the experience of collaborating with her on this? What stands out to you about the process and how were you able to build off of each other's strengths? Yeah, what was really fun about this, this is the first time I've ever set a libretto of this le uh, length, but also with a living poet. I usually, you know, we have to deal with public domain and all of those things as composers, and so I would usually just stick with public domain text so that I wouldn't have to worry about anything. With this, it meant more to be able to talk to a living, breathing person. Um, and so when we were going through this process, she had already written the libretto, so I asked her to record a couple of the vignettes to hear her pacing, the way that she said certain words, the way that she hung on to certain words. Um, and then, you know, I'd send back a couple drafts here and there. I would vocalize a couple things here and there to capture it. Uh, and it was a really fun process. We start rehearsals this week, so. Should be fun. So exciting. Um, and speaking of uh, more exceptional women that you, you worked with, uh, Rhiannon Giddens, who's the 2023 Pulitzer Prize winner of the opera Omar, she yeah. actually mentored you as you were creating this piece. What did you learn from her? And how do you feel The Wanderer's Tethering speaks to uh, Juneteenth? Yeah. Rhiannon Giddens is incredible. I'm so grateful to have even gotten to meet her, and I met her when I was doing that other show in Philadelphia. And the first time I had saw her perform that work in the series we were in, the way that she approaches talking about our history, um, specifically as, as it pertains to slavery, but 
finding the joy and the individualism and the humanity within those spaces and making it approachable and accessible to everyone in the audience. You could hear a pin drop when she was performing and she was barefoot and playing banjo and like conversing with the audience too about the meaning and significance of this history that's everyone's history. So when I met up with her to show the drafts, I was struggling a bit because I wanted to make sure that I was getting this correct morally. Like there's an obligation as an artist to make sure that you're capturing, well, that I'm capturing both the black American experience, but then also the Nigerian experience within this story. So when I told her about figuring out how to synthesize Negro spirituals or songs from music from really notable composers within the black American experience like Margaret Bonds and trying to find um, Igbo folklore to synthesize. She really helped me figure out a way to make that seamless and figure out a way um, to give a voice to both sides. So really grateful that we got to meet. What does Juneteenth mean to you? Juneteenth I think is a celebration of life and the resilience of black Americans. How can our viewers learn more about this libretto and attend? Yes, so if you log on to BLO Boston Lyric Opera's website, uh, there's a whole page dedicated to our concert, and that's where you can find out about more about Portia, Castle of Our Skins, Brianna Robinson, who's also the soprano performing it, um, and it's also a pay-what-you-can event, so we really encourage everyone to come as well.